Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Email me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. And today, we are discussing a model that debuted in 2020. A bit of a throwback piece and heritage-inspired from Breitling. This is the Chronomat B01, paying tribute to the original 1984 Chronomat that under Schneider family ownership helped to relaunch the Breitling brand. We'll talk about that in a moment, but first let's talk fit. 42 millimeters in diameter, it's roughly a cushion case in profile, and you can see it is uh, 15.4 millimeters thick, so it's a little bit chunky, though not as chunky as some Breitling watches. 50.4 millimeters from lug to lug means it's reasonably short across the wrist, and then the spacing between the lugs is 22 millimeters, so though this Rouleau bracelet is inspired by the mid-1980s, it is still a watch that wears modern with a broad stance thanks to that large lug spacing. Throwing it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it looks good, it feels good. I would say a wrist down to about 15 centimeter circumference could wear this well. It's a timepiece that's thick enough that you probably wouldn't want to wear it with the tightest of dress sleeves, but you should be absolutely fine with a jacket. And it spreads its weight nicely, the Rouleau bracelet today being a lot more substantial than in the 80s, so it nicely counterbalances the watch. So if you like to wear your watch loose, it's not going to have a tendency to try to roll over porpoise or somersault. Now taking a look at that bracelet, it is sort of the highlight of this watch. A design that looks a whole lot less dated with a couple of style refinements and the absence of two-tone. It's actually a nostalgic piece. Retro watches typically hark back to the 19... 50s, 60s, and 70s, but I think Breitling has a winning idea in referencing the best of the 80s. You have that roll-style short link profile, ovoid, as you can see in cross-section. There's a lovely bevel that runs down the edges of the links, and you can see it as a tapered bracelet. The intermediate polished semi-links are a nice touch, contrasting with the satin primaries. And then you can see there's also a combination of a satin on the side with those polished bevels that you can see are on both sides of the links. Now, pins and sleeves are used to size here, so you'll need a block and a punch to size at home, but you can see there are many removable links on both sides. So this will allow sizing precision. You're gonna get the right fit. Double deploying clasp, you can see twin trigger, and a very low profile, the Breitling B, now bereft of its wings, because Breitling CEO Georges Kern wants you to think of land, sea, and air sports when you think of Breitling, not just air. Rolling over the case, you can see some of the elements that would be familiar to the Italian Frecce Tricolore, who originally helped develop the 1984 Chronomat. They're an Italian military aerobatic demonstration squadron, essentially the equivalent of the Red Arrows, the U.S. Thunderbirds, or the Navy's Blue Angels. So they were the evaluators of that comeback chronograph for Breitling the chronograph, and through the early 80s, they had prototypes on hand, and in 1984, the product of their collective wisdom was launched for the civilian market. And you can see a lot of those elements are retained. The watch is a cushion case profile, perhaps a bit more than in the past. It has a nice combination of tapered lug, transitional bevel and polish and satin finish on the flanks as well as the lug hoods. The chronograph pushers are a little bit more substantial. You can see they're ovoid and semi-conical with high polish, and this is an element that the Freke from the 80s would recognize the screw-down onion-style crown. They'd also recognize the rider tabs on the bezel. Now, these are there to allow easier purchase on the bezel when your hands might be wet, sweaty, or in the cockpit, gloved. So it's very easy to get a grip on this bezel. You also hear 120 clicks. Take a listen. It is a very satisfying and refined feel. There is nothing crude in this bezel click, and with 120 clicks, you're gonna be able to align it easily and precisely with the minute hand. You can also see that the bezel is held on by screws. So this is a captive bezel. This is what you'll find on, for example, most Zinn watches. It's a very sturdy construction that allows precise alignment of the bezel, as well as basic immunity to being knocked off by a blow. So you can't snap this bezel off. It's a little bit more secure than the snap-on, snap-off, tag, omega, and Rolex bezels. You can also see that there's a bunch of polish here with some satin finish on the rider hoods for contrast and then lacquer fill on the bezel. The bezel, of course, used for timing up to 60 minutes. You note that the chronograph only times up to 30, so it's quite practical, in fact, to have the chronograph and the bezel working for you at the same time. And of course, this bezel being unidirectional and the watch being 200 meters water resistant with a constant seconds hand, it can function as a true dive watch. It's not just a pilot's chrono. The dial features a tachymeter scale for gauging the speed of an object moving very quickly with a base of 500, and you use that in conjunction with the chronograph seconds hand. The dial itself features a few red marks outboard 
of the hour track and you can see there are red Arabic numerals with hash marks inboard of the tachymeter and then the dial features applique steel rhodium plated indices with sunken registers tone on tone dial that is silver with black this is an inverse panda that design cue those color contrasts they're supposed to tell you today you're looking at an in-house caliber Breitling once again we have the B bereft of its wings on the dial there is a date there's a quick set for the date a stop seconds or hacking feature and then the watch features a column wheel for crisp actuation and pusher feel and then a vertical clutch engagement so there's no jump to the seconds hand there's also no additional wear and tear if you just want to leave the chronograph running you can do that thanks to the vertical clutch turn it all over a lot going on here. Caliber B01 launched in 2009 in the Chronomat family, and it wasn't initially designed to be seen under a display case back. Display case backs under Georges Kern have been more common, and the surprise is that this movement not designed to be seen actually looks pretty good. You can see the column wheel, an element of uh, high polish there, as well as satination, Cote de Genève, and some machined bevels. It is mostly machine finished movement, but a good looking one. It pivots on 47 joules, it beats way at 4 hertz, and it features Etichron for precise regulation. I always like to see that. Uh, the watch is adjusted in five positions and it is a chronometer certified COSC. It has a 72 hour power reserve which means it has fairly long legs and again this watch is quite capable being a pilot's chronograph, a sports watch, formal enough to be your dress watch and of course also viable as a dive watch. You get a lot with this model. Reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. And we're back with the Breitling Chronomat. Note that the dial is extensively loomed, including all of the hands, and that the indices themselves feature a hammerhead profile.